Attorney Steve Sabra. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Attorney Stephen Sabra. You're listening to Law Talk on 1480 WSAR. We do the show every Tuesday from 1 to 2 p.m., and it's your opportunity to call in with any law-related questions. Our number, 508-673-1480. Hello. Yes, sir. Steve. Yes. i got a short question. Uh, Can you turn your radio down in the back, yes, though? Yes, I will. Just, Thank I you. will. Just a minute. Good afternoon. Hello. Yes, sir. Steve. Okay, that's 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 much better. Yeah, okay. I got a question. Mm-hmm. Years ago, I was living at home, right? Mm-hmm. And I bought a lot right next door to my mother, but I didn't have enough room for a driveway. So my mother said she'd leave it in the will. Evidently, she did not leave it in, in the will. Now my sister's got the property. She's giving me a hard time about the driveway. I've been using that driveway, and I put an asphalt driveway in since 1962. Hmm. Have I got any legal... Uh Rights to that, all? Yeah, you prob you probably do. I mean, it's it can be a little complicated, but basically, from what you're telling me, it sounds like this driveway that you use is on the your mother's or your late mother's property. Yes, and it's only there are three feet or four feet I need okay. to make a full driveway. Thanks. Okay. So there's something called uh, two things. There's there's what's called adverse possession and what's called uh, an easement, let me see if I get this right, an easement, I think, by prescription, um, which which essentially says that that you've used that driveway for so many years, 20 plus years, and you've driven over that other person's property, which was at the time your mother's and now is in other family members' names, yes. and, then you develop certain rights to, to continue to use it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you get into a, there are battles about that in court, some Sometimes, with regard to the property owner putting up barricades or something like that to, yeah. to not allow the person to, to use it anymore. But it sounds to me like you'd have a pretty good case to say, listen, I've used this for whatever number of years, 40 or 50 or 60 years, it looks, yeah. it sounds yeah. like now. Uh, so it would be, I think the other party would be hard pressed to prevent you from continuing to use it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's sometimes also it, you, you make a good point that your mother didn't do anything official, and sometimes people procrastinate. It would have been a lot better if they just uh, if somebody had just surveyed that property and then just cut a piece out and gave it to you, yes, and then there wouldn't. Yeah, that's what she was going to give to me, and evidently during the years uh, it didn't happen. Yeah, well, that does happen sometimes, and people mean to do things and they don't, and then it it uh, you know before I guess. Guess while she was alive, there wasn't ever any issue. And no, no issue at all. I've had no problems. And right now it's a different thing because my my sister's getting older, and there's another relative in Connecticut. It's, it's given, you know. Yeah. Except because she wants the house of when my sister dies, the one in Connecticut, and all that's got kind of kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, that happens. Maybe so there's a there's a way to. Um, to resolve it now and, and pay to to buy the that pe- that small piece that you have there. I don't know if that that would help the situation or they they uh, they feel they need that property. I, I don't. I'm not sure exactly what. No, the actually they don't because it's two cars can go in and they park both side by side. Mm. But like I say, it was a 50 foot lot and I needed my house and I had you know it's short about three four feet to right. make a full driveway. Right. Well, I mean, there's one, you know that's one option to try to work out a financial. Uh, uh, arrangement uh, so that you don't involve get involved with litigation in the future because something like that if you get lawyers involved and whatever and if it has to go to go to court then it gets to be expensive sometimes so uh, but I mean to answer your question directly if you u- used it continuously and openly uh, all those years uh, matter of fact I have a garage in the back and if they stop me from getting in there I won't be able to get into my garage either hmm well, well, that's you know. Once the, those things start happening, then you do have to get legal counsel, and uh, right. you're going to have right. to force the issue. I'll, I'll get. Uh, you got a telephone number I can have. Yep. I can get in touch with you about it. Yeah, there are numbers five zero eight. Five zero eight six seven four six seven four zero eight nine zero zero eight nine zero. 
1-800-990-8890. Right. All right, then, Steve. Okay. I'll get back to you, all, all right. right? All righty. Thanks for the call. All Thank right. You. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about the type of work I do, which is mostly serious personal injury cases, workers' compensation, and criminal defense, but we do other things as well. Uh, we try to help people in the community do, dealing with things like wills and estates uh, as well. Attorney Aspen uh, uh, handles, uh, from my office, handles our matters in Rhode Island and also does more of the real estate and uh, domestic relations. The office is located at 1026 County Street in Somerset. Very easy to find. Off-street parking, a ramp to get in the building. Uh, so it's it's very um, convenient. My phone number is 508-674-0890. So if you want to reach us at the office, it's 508 508- 674-0890 uh, and we have a great uh, staff that uh, has been with me a long time and are very helpful to people that uh, call but on Tuesdays I am here again you've been listening to Lo- more than just the headlines live, local and late breaking this is Bristol County's